Welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast with author Sarah F. Hathaway and co-host Chen Gibson. Blending survival fiction and fact to bring you entertaining education that will help you dream, survive, and thrive. And now, here's your host, Sarah F. Hathaway and Chen Gibson. Chapter 30. I was wondering if you guys found something else to do, Al said as the men entered town. We wouldn't have missed this for the world. Here's our stew, Monroe told him, looking across the faces in the crowd. You got someplace we can be useful, Cole wondered. Come on, I think they're lacking manpower at the tomato canning station, Al told him. Perfect, Cole smiled, knowing he had the knowledge to help. Who you looking for, Monroe? Chappie teased, watching his friends search the crowd. Al smiled at the men. She's over there putting lids on jars. Then lead the way, Monroe agreed. Cole froze as they approached the grocery store they used as a community center. He listened carefully to the sound in the distance. Knowing the feeling, he instructed, make sure these people are safe. Then the rumbling began. Everyone cowered looking for a safe spot to ride out the quake, but Ginger insisted, secure the jars. She knew if they broke, the community would be in serious jeopardy. Get out of the building, Cole insisted, ushering everyone out as the walls began to crack. Monroe ran to Ginger. Let's get them stowed and get out of here. Better to lose the jars than your life. We can't lose our food, she insisted, knowing the odds of survival without the supplies. Come on, Ginger, we have to go, Monroe urged as the earthquake intensified. Fighting against the movement, Monroe led her out the door. Everyone gathered in front of the building, watching the town crumble around them. Chappie pointed out at the horizon. Look out towards the valley, Virgis. Is that water? Cole watched a colossal wave clearing the land in the distance. Oh, crap. Everyone get to high ground, Cole commanded. He grabbed the arms of two elderly women, gently assisting them to the end of town where the bank building stood. It was the highest point in the town's only chance of survival. Turning to Chappie, he insisted, We have to get the supplies out of my house. It can't make it that far, right, sir? Chappie asked. If it does, we'd lose it all, Cole countered. Let's go then, Chappie declared. Come on, Monroe, Cole insisted, running back towards his home. Chappie brought the truck around and they worked quickly. The people of the community scrambled to save all they could. Their chatter echoed in the distance as a massive shaking began to rock the vehicle to and fro. The noise of panic erupted from town as one of the gas lines broke and a building exploded. We gotta move. How high is the water coming up, Cole asked. It's taking the west end of town, Chappie commented. How many trips, Monroe? If we pack everything tight enough, this one and one more, we should have all the supplies cleared. You think the community center will hold, Chappie asked. It's the tallest building in town on the highest point, Cole responded. You didn't answer the question, Chappie challenged. Cole looked at him, concerned. It's our best bet. As soon as the truck is loaded, get the supplies over there. Monroe and I will stage the last load so we're ready when you get back. I'll be back as fast as I can, Chappie assured him, hopping in the driver's seat. As they turned to go back in the house, the men looked up, hearing the sound of another truck approaching. Heard you guys could use a hand. We're done at the Wilsons, Al informed them. Cole smiled widely at the man's arrival. We sure could. We got one more load. I'll stay and help. We'll all get there faster, Chappie volunteered. Form an assembly line. We'll make quick work of this, Monroe assured them. As they moved the boxes, Cole asked Al, Did anyone have news of Kingman? If the water is already on our doorstep, that town can't be doing well. Why didn't anyone warn them? National triage. What's that now? National triage. The feds are deciding who and what they can save, Monroe interjected. And what they can't. Chappie added. Guess a city in the desert ain't worth much, Al noted. They're already invested in one of those, Cole agreed. Suppose they'll come round up refugees to ship to Vegas, Monroe speculated. Hell, I'll walk there myself. I'm not sure what will be left after this, Al admitted sadly. Not much if we don't get a move on, Chappie added. That's the last of it, Monroe declared. They left, closing the door. Cole stood there for a moment, staring sadly at his home. Come on, Virgis, we have to go, Chappie encouraged him. I know, I'm coming. 
He slowly left, climbing into the driver's seat of his truck. He started the vehicle and pulled away. What will we do, guys? If I lose my home, we're all refugees. You told Dolores the Badlands were going to be under Merck control, and if she could survive, she could stay, Monroe commented. Yeah, so? Cole wondered how that was relevant now. So we survive and help as many others do that as possible. We wait out this flood, see where the chips fall, and hop on the game board, Monroe offered. Or we go back. McClintock will fight for your position. We go back and do our job, Chappie suggested. The problem is, Chappie, our job would be rounding up people like us. I'm not sure I can be a part of that. But for now, Monroe is right. We got to wait this out. Life is about to change, Cole confirmed. Hello, and welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast. This is episode number 428, season 15, episode 30. Happy Sunday, everyone. Hey, Chin, what's up? Hey, Chin's up. So is, is this episode going to be sponsored by Tiger Bomb or yes. something like that? Yes, <laughs> it sure is. Oh, my gosh. Now, the best is a TENS unit, like the little electric things that saves me oh, from I, so I, I much never... Advil. It's not even funny. <laughs> so, Chin's comments, because he just threw his back out a little bit, and uh, I decided <laughs> to run a Ninja Warrior course yesterday, and <laughs> I ain't 20 no more. <laughs> Sucks. Yeah, the, the upper body body's is a little toast. The body is just... <laughs> yeah, mine's like, there. dude, I got this all day long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> body's like no no we don't no <laughs> we've done that already on to the next one <laughs> i was going across the cargo you don't net slow down i'll slow you down <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i was going across the cargo net and you have to like turn to go the other way to get up to the platform and my yeah. leg got stuck in there so i'm like uh -huh. trying to get myself untwisted so i'm not hanging like a moron from my ankle <laughs> Yeah, it just toasted me. So how'd that work out? Um, I fell into the foam pit. <laughs> <laughs> and then like I said, the foam pit was like three times harder to get through than uh oh. you can imagine because it's so deep. That'd be fun. But yeah. Yeah, Fletcher did pretty decent. He's all long and lanky and uh skinny, you know. <laughs> so he did pretty good. But yeah. I was like, I have a whole new respect. For those people now, like, psh, more of the, before I'm like, come on, what's wrong with you, you know? And now I'm like, he's going to do what? <laughs> we um, love that show. That uh, yeah. America Ninja, whatever that yep, show the is. the American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's That's good. That's That's why I say, like, I have a whole new respect now, man. I'm like, Phew. that stuff is tough. <laughs> 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 like... On this one, they take like a candy cane and they swing. It's like hooked in a in a circle. They swing, have to unhook it, and then hook it into another one and then land oh, on a yeah. car. I'm like, yeah, that. I see them do it with rings and bars, like a, a bar where they go up a, like a ladder kind of thing. But they yeah, use the, yeah, the salmon the ladder. Hop. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. That's just crazy. So anyway, more work needed on my upper body. <laughs> and then my suggestion to you was uh, when you got to help out moving boxes this weekend. That's just crazy time as well. Yeah. that's what I, I uh, twisted my back on Friday. So I've been resting up because I have to f help a friend <laughs> move on tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I would definitely put a back brace on. Like, I'm not a fan uh, uh, of wearing those all the time because they will make yeah. you weak. But in a situation yeah, like this where you're already, yeah, kind of on edge, um, yeah, I would say definitely put one on if I was you. Well, that's what happens because I wasn't on the mountain doing stuff. I was just hanging out at mom's. Yep. Eating bonbons. Brock threw his back oh, out one time picking up a bottle off the floor. When Chris, yeah. when Fletcher was little, yeah, and we were going yeah, to hockey camp stuff. like a week yeah. later. Yeah. <laughs> we did. Uh, he went into the chiropractor and like intensive chiropractic, and he had him going for yeah. for hockey camp. Yeah, so I was I was a 
we were another trip down. Maybe it's visiting my mother that does it. To me. Another trip down to my mom. <laughs> <It's a stress. laughs> I went to pick up my dog off the ground, and it's not like you're Ragnar. My dog's like ten pounds of fur, right? Fluff. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I picked it up and I threw out my back, and I couldn't get off the floor. Uh-huh. They're all like, "What's wrong with you?" I'm like. It, you know, it's hard to breathe because every, any the wrong movement, it like sends sends spiking pain through your back. So, I'm like, just give me a second. <laughs> I'll roll over in a minute and right. I'll work my sit up off the ground. The back's the worst because it's like your central uh, point. So, like everything, yeah. you know, it's not like when your arms hurt or something. You just you know kind of put one on a shelf unless it's your primary. Yeah, it's like what know. do you do? It's like right. It's core. You, you try to find that like no pain zone and the minute you move it's like that's why we we all gotta stay physically fit because Uh, you know tough life and then like okay say you had to get your food and your water and everything for tomorrow (laughs) you know and why you need a community i I, I can say i've had a lot less aches and pains since moving to the homestead lifestyle than i had in the office lifestyle yeah, because you sure. just work more. It's just constant. yeah, just doing stuff. I mean, yeah, like not. I don't. I haven't really worked out that hard, but I've worked. I mean, just feeding yep. animals and moving, building supplies, and just doing stuff. At a jujitsu class, um, the girls would be like, "Gosh, you're so strong, dude!" I'm like, "Arm <laughs> strong." You know, you're just That's carrying right. buckets exactly. around, carrying feed bags, yeah. doing firewood. You know, all of that makes yep. a difference. So it, it's like every movement. It's not just like lifting a barbell, rotate. You know, um, yep, the same up and down. It's like all kinds of twists and a turn in it. Although I would encourage you to still do some lifting up and down because uh, yeah. you know it's important to keep all those stabilizer muscles in in uh, good shape. Yep. All right. So there's my rant on physical fitness. <laughs> we both got a little cooked today. That's funny. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, same day. And then even Fletcher's like, oh, I haven't done anything in so long. I'm like, yeah, lazy butt. <laughs> yeah, suck it up. <laughs> yeah. Wait till you get to be Chin's age, Fletcher. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's I'm like, yeah. Yeah, put like 23 years on yourself and then come talk to me, okay? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, now I know why there were no other adults out there. <laughs> so, <coughs> all righty. Now we got a little bit of a cold going around uh, as well. Yeah, Christian wasn't feeling very well today. He's mm-hmm. had a little bit of a fever last night. So, yay. Tis the season. <laughs> yep. Um, let's see, what do we got going? So next big appearance for Sarah is in April. I will be out at the um, Patriot Conference in Illinois. That's the last weekend of April. Um, hopefully, I'm going to get a Texas class together for my self-defense um, and anti-kidnapping and sexual assault classes between now and then. So I'll keep you posted on that. Um I'm getting everything in line so that, you know, you got to be prepared person, right? So I got to worry about insurance and all that kind of stuff. So I'm getting all those ducks in a line and uh, should be able to roll that out for um, some of the locals here in Texas uh, pretty soon. Uh, Episode nine, Changing Earth Audio Drama is now playing over on the website, over at your favorite podcast platform. So check it out. Um, we're just going to come ripping right into the end of this series. It's it's all good stuff. And uh, um, epic upgrades going on with the audio on it. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, that brings us into Virgis. So we had our funny chapter last week. <laughs> I actually love that chapter so much. The water. It's such a good like survival lesson. Mm-hmm. And funny. The, the stew chapter. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. The Monroe special. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this week, disaster strikes. So another earthquake. Um, and we have the tsunami that comes in. So that brought us right into the topic for today, which is tsunami risk. So what was it? What was you um the the uh, statistic that you found a third of our population lives within yeah, on 60. the coast. Yeah. yeah. 
within 60 miles of the ocean, a third yeah, of the human world. population. Yeah. Yeah. That's just crazy. You know that's starting to work opposite here in the United States because everybody's getting the heck out of those states right now. They're like, yeah, we're not living there yeah, anymore. Yeah, like 40% of the population of the United States lives in counties directly on the coastline. Yeah, no. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know how close I am to, like, uh, the Gulf of Mexico from here. Google Google map it. You can do a little distance calculation as the crow flies. Probably, ding, ding, probably um, pretty close myself. I might fall within that. Oh my gosh, I'm going to freak myself out. Thirty nine percent. Can you outrun a column of water? <laughs> no. How you many know, mountains are between you and and the coastline? But none. <laughs> exactly. I'm in Texas, dude. <laughs> you got yeah. mountains out there. Oh, that's true. There might be actually one set of mountains. Yeah. I mean, it's not like a lot, but. Yeah, there might be. Okay, I'm going to put Gulf of Mexico. <clears throat> you guys are with me on my little adventure here. The I got to find line I know. Crosses. Ding. Do, 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 do. Push pin in and nope. do the measurement. Uh, f- probably like five hours um, is my closest. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, five hours for me to get to the coast. Um, three hundred, say three hundred miles for me to get to the coast. So that's pretty good. Yeah, Phil is definitely <clears throat> a lot closer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Phil is definitely I in gotta the have a lot of water. I've got over a thousand foot of elevation to get up to me. So, yeah. See, Garden Girl says no real mountains here. That's because we're used yeah. to. We both lived in the Sierra Nevadas in California, so we're like, oh, yeah. yeah, those aren't mountains. But I've heard yeah. there's some down south, even by this town called Georgetown, which is kind of funny because that was one of the towns. Uh, this, well, I think there's a Georgetown in every state. Really. <laughs> I think so. I mean, I look at a lot of maps because we do a lot of road trips. And there, a lot of the the states have a Georgetown in it. So anyway. Yeah, we just stopped by AAA and re-upped all of our maps. Oh, love it. <laughs> like all the surrounding state maps just to have them in the car. Oh, yeah. I've got a um the, my State Farm one, but it's like falling apart because I used it for so much research research for my book so i had something tangible in my hand yeah 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 i have a road atlas but i get individual maps too because there's even more detail on yeah for each state look at you go hugo (laughs) indiana jones over there (laughs) hey i got a whip (laughs) right you do get the fedora you got a red one didn't i get a red one black yeah i got a blue one and then I have my um, one from Australia as well. That's kangaroo leather. Yeah. That one's huge, though. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, squirrel. So, tsunami is a giant ocean wave that comes ashore. It's usually caused by a submarine earthquake, um, underwater or coastal landslide, or a volcanic eruption. So, like when La Palma was in danger of erupting, we we're really worried about a tsunami on the East Coast because that would push the wave. If that land fell in there, it would push the wave towards the shore. So, it's basically how our tsunamis um, work. And they get so powerful because basically the fast water, fast moving water starts stacking on top of the slow moving water, which is why, like we were talking in the green room, they don't just count the head of the tsunami. They count the whole column. And that's whole insane. Column of water. More yeah. power. Yeah. That's, did you have a number on that? I can't remember if you had a number on that, on what the. No, I think, but they were just saying how if there's more power because it's the entire column of water. It's not just like a surface wave. Right. Yeah. yeah. So they just start pushing in. Um, when a tsunami is going to happen, typically the water will pull away from the beach ahead of time. Mm. So if you're ever sitting on the beach 
and you see that water start pulling away, get the heck out of there. Yeah, not a time to start hunting for shells. My husband had me watch this movie this morning called, uh, like, Moon, Moon, I don't know, oh, it's like Moon Collision or something. Maybe if you guys in the chat know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, it's pretty good. It was about, like, how the moon is actually, like, an alien ship and this AI technology was, like, going to crash the moon into Earth and they had to, like, figure it out. Moonfall. I think it's called Moonfall. It was actually nice. pretty good. It had some, like, good... Um, from a earth geeks point of view, you know, like good cinematography of what would happen uh, with the water, like just going up into the air because of gravity and stuff. So that was pretty neat. Check it out. Yeah. Moonfall. Okay. So eight tallest tsunamis ever recorded. Biggest one. Oh no, we're going to start at number eight. So that was carrot Ford in Greenland. That was a 295 foot wave in 2017. Oh, that's that's number eight. Yeah, that's eight on the list. Right. 200. Right. Seven was um Ambon. If, oh, go ahead. If you think of like a story, like a building story, is about ten feet or so. Right. So that's like. 25, 30 stories tall. It's gigantic. It's huge. I mean, that, yeah, if that hits your city, I mean, just goodbye. Um, Ambon Island, Indonesia, they had a 328 foot wave um, <sighs> in 1674. Latua Bay, Alaska. This is on the list three times. So I'm not sure I'd want to live in this place at all. And I'm sorry if you do live there. Maybe maybe you should uh, choose a different space. But Latuya Bay, Alaska. I'm still on Google Maps. I'm going to look it up. Um, they had a 394-foot wave in 1853. A 490-foot wave in 1936. There's another one coming. I'm not going to bring it in yet. Um, number four on the list, Icy Bay, Alaska. A 633-foot wave in 2015. 600. Uh, Vajant Dam, Italy. 771-foot wave, 1960. Now, that one was a reservoir-induced earthquake uh, that caused that tsunami to happen. Is that not insanity? It's like the how they measure this the height? Building the dam. I know that's what I'm wondering. Because number two on the list was when Mount St. Helens erupted and the landslide yeah. hit Spirit Lake. It caused the 820 foot wave in 1980. <laughs> in the lake. So, like, if you think that you're it's safe, like all the water just got displaced. I yeah. Mean, I mean, not just right. displaced. Like all the water like, got stood <sighs> up on it. Yeah, and it caused, like, these mud rivers to just start flowing. Yeah, and, I remember that. Yeah, pe a lot of people died just in getting buried in the mud. All the ash flow and mud and everything else. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm looking this up, Latuya Bay. Okay, there What's it to you? What's it to you? Gulf of Alaska. <laughs> okay, so it's like... A lot more, um, I thought it'd be like on the edge of Alaska by the Aleutian Islands, and it's not. It's more like snuggled up by sure. British Columbia. Oh, okay. I'll share it on the on chat for everybody. Post it. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Okay, there you go. All right, cool. so number two was Mount St. Helens, Washington. And then number one is Latuya Bay again, 1,720-foot wave in 1958. And that one I've heard stories of, like, um, whenever you watch Earth oh, yeah. State, right? earthquake documentaries, uh, this one dude was, like, sitting on the, um, on the pier when it happened, and, like, three of his friends were just washed right away and killed from it yeah see what this is it's a big funnel mm-hmm so the two you big 
Yeah. I remember watching a documentary on tsunamis. And it was talk there one of one of the events was I forget, it was like Greenland, Iceland, one of those something. And it was a it was a bay like this. And at the mouth of the bay or across from the mouth of the bay was a big iceberg that would drop chunks of ice and create waves that went oh, up. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. And since it was funneled, as it it focused the energy of the wave, to, you know, yep. shorter, shorter. And then the, the depth of the water got shorter and shorter, so even more intense. Yeah, because yeah, it can't spread out then at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yep. So. It's like when you put your finger over our hose, when it's just coming out, it just blah. But as you put your thumb over the end of the hose, it makes it stronger stream. You mm -hmm. know? No, Same that's amount. definitely what it's doing is funneling in there. Yeah. Yeah, it funnels in mm -hmm. there and it just gets pinched as it goes down the bay. But I also found it interesting long, as far as um, the dams and the lakes. Because we're thinking like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I'm not near any of that. You know, well, that would never happen. Well, it could happen off a lake. It can happen if a dam breaks. You got, you know, that huge wave coming right down at you. So, um, so the deadliest tsunamis are not necessarily the biggest tsunamis. Yeah. Um, San, San Riku, Japan. Japan's on here a lot. Um, that one happened in 1896. Did 26... 26,000 people died in that event. Hondo, Japan, 1826, 27,000 dead in that one. Um, and you see, like, Japan's older numbers, too. They definitely uptick their warning system. Because 1707, 30 dead. Um, Takaido, Nankaido. Um, Nankaido, again, 36,000 in 1883. When Krakatoa erupted in 1883, there was 36,000 people that died because of that event. Um, South China Sea and Taiwan, 40,000 people dead in 1982. In Arica, Peru, it was now Chile, but it, it was Peru in 1868, 70,000 people dead in that event. Italy, Messina, Italy, 80,000 people dead. And then there's a tie for second. Portugal, um, there's a tsunami that hit Portugal, Morocco, Ireland, and the UK all at the same time. 100,000 people dead. It was in 1755, approximately $1.5 million in damages just in Portugal from that event. And then uh, ancient Greece, the, the tsunami that took out the islands of Crete and Santorini, um, 100,000 people dead because basically the islands just got wiped out. Um, that was in 1645. And then the one that happened in the Indian Ocean um, on the, um, in Sumatra, that was 300,000 people dead. That one happened in 2004. $10 billion in damages. And the most costly... Tsunami that I could find is the one that happened March 2011 in Japan. And that was $23.5 billion in damage from one tsunami. So extreme events. Lots of loss of life. Really, really expensive. Tsunamis. Um, they've been coming out with all kinds of reports about Washington and being so vulnerable to tsunami damage. Because of the same kind of thing. It's funneled in, right? Yep. Um, Those bays. There's like the Crescent Bay, too, on the coast of California. That's really, really susceptible to tsunami activity as well. All right. So future threat. The reality, like I said, any coastal area is really vulnerable. Uh, it could happen. Lake. Um, side. Um, but the ring of fire, Pacific ocean ring of fire is the most risk because of the amount of volcanic and earthquake activity. Um, they monitor the activity with buoys, but like you said, in the green room, Chen, don't wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause the, 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 that one that what was it, Indonesia or whatever it would in, 2004 mm -hmm. yep, that, that killed was like over 
200,000 people because they didn't have any warning systems. Yeah. Yeah, they just didn't know it was coming at all. People were like running out into the ocean when the ocean was peeling back. They were like, oh, it's so cool. <laughs> well, you know. Have you ever get caught like a rip current in the ocean? Um, no, because like, I don't. I, grabs you and tumbles you aware on? No, I grew up in Michigan with lots and lots of Great Lakes. And uh, I don't really care for the ocean. So, yeah. I've had so many nightmares about the ocean. <laughs> Look at Silver Streaks there. We need tsunami control more than gun control. Right? That's Heck Yeah. We were talking about that in the green room about like there's so many more things that are very very important for us to be, you know, thinking about and spending money on as a society that we're not doing right now. Um my son was a member of the Civil Air Patrol for a while. Like, and the civil services used to be so much bigger for disaster prep than they are right now. Um, it's, it's crazy that it really got like a bad rap. Thanks, mm -hmm. History Channel. You know, everything's got a bad rap that should be good. Yeah. Okay, so tsunami got dot gov there. There's some good places sure. to go and uh, find alerts for your area. Um, they probably have like apps and things like that as well. I wasn't able to find any online, but I'm sure they're out there if you looked it up in your app store. Weather dot gov has uh weather dot gov backslash tsunami ready. They have community preparedness programs so that if you are one of those coastal communities you you first like identify the hazards in your area and then you put signs up and then you have clearly marked evacuation routes and education both in your community and your schools regarding tsunamis and how to get to high ground and do those things so i always love prepared communities so i've got to i know it's like a government program but i got to stand behind that one because um Preparing your community yep. is never a bad thing, right? Nope. And uh, translate over to personal preps as well. So knowing your hazard zones, right? I live by this lake. I live by this body of water. It could be a potential threat, um, even as much as you would hope not. You never know. Um, know multiple routes to get to high ground and practice them. Don't just be like, oh, I got them all drawn on my map. I'm sure I'll use it one day. You know, like actually drive it so you know, like, oh, this road doesn't actually go through. Even sometimes on Google, you can't tell. And the other day, because I research all my stuff for uh, Changing Earth, there was like a Google reroute that was just like taking people out to the middle of the desert and leaving them out there because they'd run out of gas and stuff. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So um, always, you know, do your homework, do your research on that stuff. Um, multiple routes, do the practice. If you have a medical emergency at this time, where are you going, right? Is the hospital that you normally go to in the danger zone? Then you probably don't want to go that direction, you know? So, you don't want to fly into the danger zone? No, but if you have a medical emergency, you know, when you're in panic mode, uh, things shut down, you go into muscle memory and you're like, this is where I go when it, when emergency strikes, but you've got to make sure that you can go, you know, to a safe hospital that might be in another town or something like that. Yeah. Garden girl says, got to find some high, high ground around here. It's so true. So my thought was, because I'm going to talk about this later, what suspicious observers <laughs> has kind of figured out like Put one of those blow up rafts in the attic <laughs> with an axe up there. And then if anything ever happened, like you could just go through your attic and boom, and your little raft. It's probably. You're, you got to have your, your axe up there. Yeah, right. Uh huh. They make like those ocean blow up rafts that have like the top on them. So maybe it work, would work like a bobber if you had to like boom oh, yeah, yeah. through the water. <laughs> That's just a fictional author brain going off. 
Um, and know where to monitor your alerts. You should have an NOAA, the NOAA weather radio already. It's going to be on there. So you should have one of those ready to go anyhow. Um, if you don't have a Baofeng, you, you should probably get a hold of one of those at the bare min. Uh, me, the pot calling the kettle black. But um, um, they do work. And uh, if you like, don't mind shopping on Timu, even though I, I don't ever because it's directly funny no, in China. Yeah, I don't. Well, but and I've heard you can get like they track. They do. I'm sure. You I mean, can, you can get everybody like, tracks you, but <laughs> you can get like 15 Bayo fangs for like uh, I don't care. ten bucks. I, I mean, even, it's awesome. They're all over the YouTube. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not even close to that. I'm not touching it. I know. But anyway, each their own. But I had ordered pants from there before I like researched the company, just because I oh, like yeah. the pants. And then I was yeah, because like, they're dirty. Yeah, I was like, no way, like five bucks. And they're nice. Yeah. I mean, they're great yeah. summer pants and everything. And then I was like, oh, I'd rather shop Amazon. <laughs> oh. <than them." laughs> yeah, this is like yeah. directly China trying to be our new Amazon so we can directly fund China. Um, No, I'm good. So. Yeah. Ah, nice. She's got her life jackets in the attic. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any life jackets. Okay. Um, suspicious observers. Head on over there. Check out his catastrophe cycle. The video entitled The Oceans from his playlist. And uh, there's a good explanation of what he kind of predicts there as far as what's going on. There's many other videos um, that he has of this as well. That's just one that... Um, has a pretty good summary on it and if you need further explanation watch some of his previous videos because um you have to just kind of start watching ben's content to really get educated enough to understand like 85 percent of what he's talking about you know he's super super intelligent so um your just, eyes open yeah no fear just takes a little <laughs> time to uh to watch him and start understanding all of this stuff. So basically with the pole switch, there's a significant risk of as our planet actually moves and slides because of the poles moving that the water would like just start slowly coming up onto one of the other continents. But as it does that, it's going to hit resistance. And there's also, um, so we've, Humans have never been alive and recorded one of these cyclical events before. Last one was 6,000 years before that. They're pretty much on a 6,000-year cycle. The only place we have the rec record of it is in the ground and then like stories like Noah's Flood and things like that. So as it comes up, then the ocean actually sloshes back. So on the other side, it can be a higher wave than what was initially done on the one side, because as it sloshes back, you know, it's moving faster, it's going to be bigger. The bonus there is that you would have a time lead on it. So let's say that, you know, it started coming up on um, the coast of California, the ocean level just started slowly, slowly, slowly encroaching, kind of like what's in my in my later books. If you guys read that, um, I have this event actually happen. And so the other side of the world is going to be losing that ocean, you know, that, that edge as that water moves. And then it sloshes back towards the other side and it can be really violent on that side. So interesting theories. And it's a, just a crazy time to live through when things like this start shaking up because it's happening, whether we want to admit it or not it's happening to our planet and uh so it's just going to be an interesting time to be alive to see what happens with that and you know make yourself right with uh with whoever you believe in so that because <laughs> it's going to be like a safe fun time um first also that video so if you're looking for like well what's going to happen in my location 
that video will tell you but he also has another video of like the safest places to be when the disaster hits and so those are a couple of great videos to watch if you're like well what's going to specifically happen to where i'm living right now uh it doesn't look too awesome for north america i'm just saying like the he predicts the wave coming over the appalachians so um and then coming up through the gulf of mexico and all that and um, if you've ever seen Edgar Casey's uh, his prophecies and what he predicted that the United States would look like, it's basically what I use as the model for the world in my books. And uh, it's an interesting flood map. So you can check that out as well. Um, and then, you know, of course, um, oh, I get all kinds of stuff from from feedback from people. And they're like, oh, well. You know, this area is way higher than that area. And so your map doesn't make sense because, like, I made the map or something, but whatever. You know, because of where the the um, elevation of the land is. Well, the whole theory bases itself on a crustal displacement where the continents are actually freed from the bottom. So they're kind of floating around. And it gives the ability for land masses to just go up and down. And even without that crustal displacement, you know, when the new Madrid earthquake happened, there was some areas that went up two stories, like as high as a two-story building just in a matter of five minutes uh, that literally made the Mississippi run backwards. So, you know, I know people just are keyboard warriors and, and saying their thing and doing their thing. But for you to not recognize that there's been events like that that haven't happened in the past, it could rapidly change. It doesn't have to happen millions over millions of years. Um, that's kind of, you know, my take on it. So most scientists are like, oh, well, it happens slowly. Like, does it? Or, you know, can we have these rapid events? Because more often than not, the the ice and the um, core samples and everything show a rapid change. So there's my tinfoil hat section of tsunamis for you. I'm such a I'm such an Earth geek. <laughs> you are. I know. I'm <laughs> like it's just so cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. They thought it was the end of the world. And that was just the, I mean, it was like months of earthquakes in New Madrid. Um, Silver Streak had popped up on chat. It was just um, months of earthquakes. If that happened now, it'd be crazy. We just haven't seen anything like that. We've been so blessed to have such a stable place to live that we kind of forgot that these things happen. So, got to know our planet. And then the arrogance of, oh, well, we caused everything to happen. No, we didn't. You know? It was those UVs. Yeah. Uh, you know, four big volcanoes can do more, you know, atmospheric damage than we've done in like five minutes <laughs> than all of human existence. So, um, you know, I'm not I'm not for polluting the planet, obviously. I, nope. I love Mother Earth. I, I'm happy to be here. And I want to take care of our, our land and, and work with it. But I think it's pretty darn arrogant to be like, oh, well, it's all humans' fault. Like, we're just on a rock, you know. No, not the case. Ah, I love tsunami talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this was like my show. I'm like, yeah, tsunamis, baby. Here we go. <laughs> that's why I don't live by the ocean, though. And that's why I don't take much stock in, like, a lot of the elites are choosing, like, Hawaii to set up their bunkers. New Zealand. <laughs> I'm like, you want to catch me dead on an island. I want to be, like, in the middle of a continent, dude. <laughs> like, uh, uh And there was a time, like, all of Nevada was underwater, you know? So... So obviously it's happened before all right on that note you want to just jump into changing earth news play that funky music <laughs> we'll do all right hold on i'm i'm i got it i have so many buttons i got the chat room <laughs> going i gotta looking at my maps okay here we go funky music
All right, change the earth. News, news, news. Soon as I win the lotto, I'll be able to have like a switchboard operator for me every time I go on. Be like taking care of me, making sure that I got <laughs> cool music. Don't say anything too like dumb. <laughs> just turn me off for a minute. Boop. <laughs> Already geomagnetic storm in effect right now a couple days ago we had an x-class flare it was a big flare um but it was on the departing limb of the sun it's just a glancing blow at us it's not gonna be anything scary but we have had that increased uh geostorm all day so it just comes with those associated health risks and maybe your cognitive abilities are a little bit lowered that type of thing um, the auroras should be pretty good. We'll see what they look like, how bad the earth takes it. But we did have that going on. It's been pretty quiet up there right now. I don't know when we're supposed to have our next major um uptick. Ben hasn't mentioned it in a little bit. I think it might be February. So, yeah, they even mentioned that. I've been noticing more and more that they have been putting up solar news on the mainstream news like on i have to look at msn news or whatever at my work you know that like the main screen or whatever is that um i've seen it up on yahoo they're like oh it could be a cannibal cme and i'm like you call us the fear mongers <laughs> like whoever calls it a cannibal cme and that just sounds wrong and like scary you know so um yeah but they have been putting it more and more up on uh the actual news so that's a good thing we need to bring aware to what awareness to what's going on because that cme could be like boop up oh, you're done just like that tomorrow's like today was your last day to prepare thanks dave jones <laughs> for putting that idea in my head <laughs> i always think about that now i'm like when is yeah. when is today was your last day to prepare Oh my gosh. <laughs> then I'm like, oh, God's got us. No problem. All right. On December 11th of 2023, there was 450 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger. Biggest of which was a 6.1 in Tongapu. Um, in Nebraska, there was a rare 4.2 earthquake in South Central Nebraska. Now, why this is big news to me is because of the Ogallala Reservoir. So when I wrote, because I, I've I learned about the Ogallala and what was happening with it, and it's this big reservoir that stretches from Nebraska into the panhandle of Texas. And I wrote it into my book because sometimes I just get like weird stuff that goes on and I'm like, oh, this would happen, you know? And so I wrote it into my book that it would become the Ogallala Lake rather than the Ogallala Reservoir. And then uh, Chin thought you thought I was you, you thought I was making it up about the Ogallala, <laughs> and because of the name too. And then um, so we did the research on it, and what was freaky is it's actually made of like limestone. Um, and the perfect materials to actually degrade, which is what we didn't want to see, um, but it is. And so the more water that we remove out of that reservoir for all our farm farming and everything, that's our breadbasket of the United States, the more vulnerable it is to actually caving in. So there's that factor going for the Ogallala. And then they started doing all the fracking around it. So... Now there's there's fracking induced earthquakes. I mean that's just reality. They they take the water wastewater and they eject it back into the earth and it causes these earthquakes. And another fucking earthquake. Right? So a 4.2 is pretty legit. That's not like a 1.6 or something. And so when I saw that, that always concerns me cuz that is definitely Ogallala territory and uh that would be a crazy, crazy day for the United States. Um, there was a 3.8 earthquake in Kingston, Jamaica. There was a 4.4 earthquake in Fozibad, Afghanistan. I don't want to laugh at your name. That were Bear lives uh, but, yeah, Fozibad. <laughs> I'm, 
I don't want to live in Fozzie Band, but like maybe if it was in the U.S., I might want to live there because that's a funny name. Um, th- on the 10th in Australia, there was a 2,000 kilometer wide dust storm that engulfed northern Australia. That's just insane. You got to do the math on that for me because you know I suck at conversions on like how long it is <laughs> in America speak. Um, long. Yeah, huge, right? A big storm hit the Midwest. There was flooding in New York. Connecticut had multiple power outages. And then also, of course, you know, prayers goes out to everybody in Tennessee from the um, tornadoes that hit last week um, there. I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at Tennessee. I'm laughing at the chat. Um, There was a story about a seven-month old child that was actually picked up in the tornado and left in a tree. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah. A little infant. So he survived. He's like the, the, the tornado survivor. Um, I talked about the new volcanic Island that formed off of uh, the coast of Japan by Okinawa. And it is still growing in size. A lot of times they just appear and then dissipate. But this one is still growing in size, so it might be a new landmass, you know? Um, man, I get so much stuff for, for some of my maps on uh, Pinterest that I'm like, you know? <laughs> I know, that's why I was like laughing. It was, it was interesting <laughs> timing. Thanks, Garden Girl. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you all have to be in the chat group that's because what, we have way too much. That's what I was going to say. that's exactly what i was gonna say like (laughs) love having everybody in there it just makes it so much more dynamic and i love being able to have the instant feedback uh and whatnot it does give you more to worry about on the 12th (laughs) of december there was 464 earthquakes that was that were 2.0 or bigger biggest of which was a 5.8 in tonga There was a 5.2 earthquake in Afghanistan. Another one, 5.5 in Argentina. Melbourne, Australia got 40 millimeters of rain in just over an hour, causing flash flooding there. Maine got hit with a major storm right after in New York. It makes perfect sense. They had um, flash flooding events there. And then there was also a severe hailstone that hit Timaru, New Zealand, and they had flooding events as well. And uh, on the 13th of December, there was 442 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger, biggest of which was a 5.5 in the Norwegian Sea. Northern California, Southern California, and South Carolina all had earthquakes on the 13th. So really both coasts kind of getting kind of getting shaken up a little. There was a 5.8 earthquake in Mexico City, and they've had some subsequent earthquake activity going on there. Uh, Cyclone Jasper finally made landfall in Queensland, Australia as a Category 2 storm. It brought the heaviest rain to Adelaide that they've had in 70 years. So they had some flooding event. In Yobi, Nigeria, there was sand and dust storms. They've been destroying communities and farms and homes. So Nigeria, we're seeing these dust storms and then um, still the flooding in uh, Kenya continues. So like it's been the same type of pattern, such extremes within like a very small geographical area. Um, severe rain in Gaza. So that was interesting for all the people that are displaced there. And then since it's all over um, when I'm doing my research, they're also flooding the um, the um, Hamas, the uh, tunnels there in Gaza, which I thought was a pretty ingenious little little uh, idea i guess they did the same thing in egypt yeah. during that arab spring except they flooded them with sewage in egypt <laughs> nasty dude the fish, there's no hiding from that no no sir like you gotta get out of there on december 14th there was 309 oh I, you guys are you noticing how high these earthquake numbers are like, this is the first one that's been under uh, 400. So, a lot of big earthquake activity over the past week. 395 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger. 
the biggest of which is a 5.5 in the South Pacific Ocean. South Carolina had another 1.6 earthquake, and we had a 3.8 earthquake in Texas as well. Um, that's that part of the North American craton again that's been um, acting up. So usually it hits the California coastline, then it'll transfer into that North American craton. Uh, f- flooding risks continue from Cyclone Jasper, just hitting northern Australia, northeastern Australia. Merapi, the volcano that erupted and killed the 23 hikers that were on the mountain, it's erupting again. Also, a Krakatau erupted over last week. Um, Just a minor eruption, though. No tsunami threat or anything like that. Uh, Florida got hit pretty much all week with pretty heavy rain in and out. Saw some flooding events there. And also in the UK, London got hammered again. Um, Rivers just came up flooding local areas and then leaving vehicles stranded. On the 15th of December, there was 407 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger, biggest of which was a 5.3 in the South Atlantic Ocean. There was a 4.2 in Pakistan. And... um, um, more sandstorms in the Canary the Canary Islands, but there was also sandstorms on the Mongolian Plateau. They were mixed with so much salt that it's literally like stinging, you know, all of your eyes. Like it's not just dust, it's salt dust that is hitting you. Um, so that's been really hard on the, for all the herders, you know, that live on that plateau out there. In the United States, extreme weather is estimated to have brought in a damage toll of $80 billion in losses this year. That is a tall number, and I don't know how insurance companies are going to keep up with that. So the next article that I have for you is of particular interest to me. There's a company, it's called Renko USA. You got to check it out for yourself but they have a new building system that's made from a composite of like plastics and um, recycled glass and tires, stuff like that. And they make cool. these Lego blocks out of them and build the house with this basically like a Lego block system and they can withstand a Cat 5 hurricane. So um, that's cool. I'm into learning about new building systems because we were talking about this in the green room. Just like how long have we been cutting down trees to make sticks and build houses? You know, I mean, it's not working anymore. We're just, we can't afford to keep losing at the rate we are in trying to rebuild. Um, we've got to come up with something better that's going to stand the test of time. We can't, we can't have disposable houses too. There's no way for us to keep up with that. Um, so on the uh, 16th of December, there was 409 earthquakes or 2.0 or bigger, biggest of which was a 5.7 in the North Pacific Ocean. There's been blizzards in Russia all week, leaving heavy snow accumulation in that country. We have a bomb cyclone en route for the northeastern part of the United States and the atmospheric storm coming back and hitting the northwestern part of the United States. So on... Thank you, Chin. I was going to put that up in the chat, but I'm I'm mid-swing. Thank you. Um, So today we've had 308 earthquakes that are 2.0 or bigger, biggest of which is a 5.7 in the South Pacific Ocean. I expect to see that number climb, um, and especially tomorrow with the earthquake activity. But we did have a large coronal hole lined up with us um, for a lot of the week, so that really pushed our earthquake numbers. There was another 2.6 in Toya, Texas, and then Florida's getting hit again with another storm. So they just haven't been able to to out to get rid of the storms this year. Um, currently, there are 27 volcanoes erupting. That's down one from the 28 we've been looking at lately. Only 14 showing minor activity. That's a nice low number, and only 30 showing unrest. So that's a nice low number as well. However, I've noticed that the volcanic activity usually follows a couple weeks to even a month behind the earthquake activity. So we're going to have to keep our eye on that number. And then as far as wildfires in the United States, there's a couple of small fires here and there, but we are not reporting any big fires in the United States right now. So yay. 
Um, oh, I remember. We need to talk about the holiday schedule. So Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve are both fa- falling on a Sunday this year. I'm going to be with my family on Christmas Eve. Sorry, everyone, but I'm celebrating Jesus' birth, and that's just how it is. I uh, love you guys. And um, with the audio drama going on, we'll definitely be doing like a fun, maybe right after the holidays, the blooper show and, and get some folks on. But Christmas Eve is definitely for my family. So we won't have a show Christmas Eve. And that's next week, right? Yeah, that's next this coming Sunday. So no show this Sunday. I know. I'm <laughs> so busy all the time. And then um, the week after that is actually New Year's Eve on Sunday. So B-Y-O-B. that's tentative. <laughs> there might be a show there and there might not. It just depends um, if I end up having friends over or not. So, because I'm sure I wouldn't be in any shape for podcasting um, on that night. So, <laughs> yes, ma'am, Jesus is the reason for the season. And uh, it's actually been a lot of fun this year. We've been reading a chapter of Luke every night because if you start at the beginning of December, um, there's 20, 24, 25 uh, chapters in Luke. And so, if you read one chapter every night for the month of December, then by the time you get to Christmas Eve, you've had the whole life of Jesus. So it's been really fun to do as a family. And my son's all like, yeah, it's Bible time, you know, and it's just, That's good. it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, Jesus has done incredible things for, for my family and for, for the world. So, um, yeah. So we're definitely going to be celebrating Christmas. So Merry Christmas to everybody. We'll have the new audio drama episodes, but we might not see you guys for two weeks here. I will definitely keep you posted as far as uh, New Year's Eve goes, because if you know we end up not doing anything, um, I'd love to get on and do a show. And maybe we'll just do a fun show. You know, we'll get everybody in the chat or whatever and, and just do a fun show instead of worrying about um, doing a book read and, and then having a specific topic. Maybe we'll just do like questions or I don't know. You guys like that idea? Like... What do you think, chat room? See what everybody has to say. But you guys can answer that question and let me know. And until next time, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a happy new year. And until then, remember, dream. Survive. Thrive. Thank you for joining Sarah and Chen for this episode of the Changing Earth Podcast. Don't forget to pick up your copy of Day After Disaster, Without Land, The Walls of Freedom, Battle for the South, Dark Days in Denver, and The Endless Night at www.authorsarahfhathaway.com. If you love the Changing Earth series and podcast, become a supporter while you're there.